Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise, praise, the name of the Lord. On the last day, on the last day, only true believers will be raptured. Who are these 
people to give glory unto the Lord? Who are these people to call upon the name of the Lord? Who are these people to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holy name? This is what we want to look into. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will give you the grace and the ability to worship him in the beauty of only Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that in the name of Jesus, everything you need to worship the Lord in the beauty of honor so that you can be among them that will rapture in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Psalm 96. In Psalm 96. We are looking at verse 9. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He's making the emphasis here again, another emphasis, telling us that we should worship the Lord. Today, we see people that they want to worship God. They want to come to the presence of God and say, Oh, my God, my Father, but how do they worship? What is God telling you and I? How is God is telling us to worship the Lord? He says we should worship Him where? In the beauty of His holy name. Fear before Him all the earth. Fear before him all the earth. Married, unmarried, single, black, white. Amen. Say, so fear before the Lord. Worship him in the beauty of his holy name. Psalm 1 oh, uh, Psalm 110. Verse 3. Psalm 110. 110. Verse 3. Hallelujah. I read verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and in the beauty of where? Of holiness. Thy people. I pray you be among his people. Amen. Not everyone that is in the church, not everyone that's going to put them below are his people. Only those that are willingly surrendering themselves, giving out themselves, those are the people he's calling upon. Look at what he says. Thy people shall be willing in a day of thy power and in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the money. Thou as thou as thou as the Jew of thy youth. Praise the Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, grace and the ability to worship God in beauty of holiness, Lord, we for you in Jesus' name. Amen. When we say beauty of holiness, what does that mean? We are saying that to honor the Lord with everything we are. We give everything to God in honoring God, that God alone should be honored in our life, in the splendor of His glory. Hallelujah. In the majesty. Of the Lord, that you, you, you forget whom you are when you come before the Lord, you worship God with everything that you are. Hallelujah! That will happen your life, and that will happen your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture has taught us that the only way we can worship God is in a natural way, in a natural way, so that the glory of God can rest upon us. Uh, Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. Hallelujah. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength. He's calling on you. Hallelujah. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength. The only way people that are sleeping. Amen? Someone that's not sleeping, you can't wake him up. Hallelujah. Someone that's well, Eddie, sound. His eyes is well open. You can't say, Bora. Or say, do what? Wake up. No. But when someone is dozing away, when someone is getting out of where he's doing, he might be sitting down. But he's getting out of that place. Then you do what? Say, Bora, do what? Wake up. God is calling on you. See, sister, wake up. You are missing the way. You are getting out of the presence of God. Hallelujah. 
Awake, awake. Put on thy strength. You have a strength that that strength is getting out of you. That strength is depreciating. That strength is get going down. Put on thy strength. I pray that someone here this morning, this afternoon, he will put on his strength in Jesus' name. Amen. It is your strength that God needs before you can worship him. God needs your strength so that you can worship him in any way. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment, praise the Lord. Put on thy beautiful garment. There's a garment that God has clothed you with, praise the Lord. Here we can say there are two garments. Amen. The outside garment and the inner garment. The inner garment is what we can call as our spiritual garment. The, 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 the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. Those are the inner garment. But uh, we are coming back at, at, at another time to look at the outside garment. Praise the Lord. Oh Jerusalem, the holy city. And for henceforth, there shall no more come unto thee. But circumcised. Hallelujah. That this sin shall no more what? Rule over you. The uncircumcised shall no more come unto you. And the clean, the, the, excuse me, the unclean, shake thyself from the dust, from the power of sin, from the power of iniquity, from transgression. Shake up yes, thyself. Say, awake. Hallelujah. Amen. You will come up. Amen. You will awake. Amen. Shake thyself. From the dust, arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the, the band of thy neck. O Catholic daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. That will happen in life in Jesus' name. Selling, selling that shake off all those things that can hinder you from worshiping God in the beauty of His holiness. Shake them off. All those penalty, all those special things. I pray you do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Romans, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 6. Bible says in from verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue? In sin, that the grace may abound, is asking you a question. Brother, God is asking you a question. Is that God is asking you a question? Say, can we continue in sin? And say, the grace of God should, work, should abound. Shall we going to live in a life of, godly, of, of, of godliness? I said, Well, God, you know. You know, there's more grace. No. Say, No, there's no opportunity for that. There's no room for that. Shall we continue in sin? And say that the grace should abound. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? Hallelujah. And pray that in the name of Jesus from this moment onward, God will bestow upon your life the grace and the garment of righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm asking that to, from this very hour, God it will transform your life, it will bring something new. Upon me, Jesus' name. Amen. In Second Corinthians chapter five, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. I wish how every one of us can have a Bible to open your Bible. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Brother Gabriel, and Brother Joshua. Share with somebody, please. Somebody will share with me, please. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. In verse 17. Therefore, if any man be aware in Christ, Hallelujah. Before now, where was he? He's in the world. He's serving Satan. He's under the, under the traditions of men, 
under the power of the enemy. Now he's saying that if any man, if any man, therefore be aware in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The beauty of the law is now upon this individual. The presence of God is the life of this individual. There's now a new creation. See? All things, I want, I don't want, has passed away. Hallelujah. All things have been done away with. He says, Behold, all things have become new. What are the all things becoming new? Our character, our behavior, the way we talk, the time we keep. Praise the Lord. Amen. The way we dress. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, the choice we make, our decision in life. The Bible says, Behold, all things are what? Become new. I pray from this moment that the Lord will make everything new in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Just behold, all things have become anew. And when all things become new, something must, be, must happen in our life. Hallelujah. Before that thing happen, don't forget that I said that our choice, our decision, is the one that enslaves us to, to, to come under the power of sin. And that must be changed. Your decision must change. Your choice must change. What you practice must be changed. So that you can have a new creation in you and around you. I pray to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible calls us as sons of God. That as many of us that are receiving him as Lord and Savior, we are sons of God. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12, Bible says, As many that are called upon the name of the Lord, Bible says, they become what sons of God. When you come up, when you call upon him, say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I need you. Right away. He says, You identify as sons of God. Say, we give them power. John chapter 10, John chapter 1, John 1, verse 12, we play, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in where? In his name. When you can say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, right away. It will come upon your life and it will give you that David we are talking about. Praise the Lord. Not that alone. When you, when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says we become a sheep in John chapter 10. John chapter 10. The sheep always follow the master. Hallelujah. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice. John chapter 10. Look at verse 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and know and I know them and they follow me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for somebody today that will hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah. And you will, you will follow him. Yeah. And as you follow him, it will change your garment. It will change your character. It will change your behavior. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Romans, in Romans chapter, in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. In Romans chapter 1, verse 7, see what he says. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, praise the Lord. God to what? God to be saints. Hallelujah. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. He's saying that, listen, sister, say, God is saying, as long as you give your life to him, when you come into the fold of God, when Barak comes into the fold of God, you become saint of God. You become a new, a new nature, turn you to be saint, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you look around it and say, St. Peter, St. Paul's Church, St. Uh, uh, St. Mary Church, Praise the Lord. Likewise, we can call you Saint uh, Gabriel. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because you are giving your life to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. The beat of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Henceforth, you will remain under that beauty in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 6. Ephesians 6, verse 6. These are the all that we are mentioning. We, 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 we started looking at, we said, when we gave our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, we become sons of God. Number two, we said, we are sheep of God. Number three, we said, we are a uh, saint of God. And we said, now we are servants of God. Praise the Lord. Only those that giving their life to Lord Jesus Christ, those are the only people that we can refer to as this name. Praise the Lord. Somebody can be in the church. Amen. You will not have this name. God will not recognize you with this title. Hallelujah. He will not see you as sheep. He will see you as goat. Amen. He will not see you as saint. He will see you as, as, a, 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 as a wayward person. Hallelujah. But now he's saying in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians 6, 6. It says, servant. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Not with eye service as men deserve, but as what? As servants of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Doing the will of God. From where? From the earth. From the earth. Not because of your husband. Not because of your wife. Not because of your friend. Not because of your sister. Not because of your mother. Amen. But you want to please the Lord. You want to do things that will make God happy. That beauty, you want that beauty to continue in your life. You will carry that beauty long. Amen. As if you carry that beauty for long in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 2. In 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And look at verse 11. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy laws, which war against the soul. You see you here as well. Amen. Those that put on that beauty, you see you as a stranger in where? In this world that you are no more, you are no more uh, 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 just somebody. You are a stranger in this world, and a stranger one day must return back where? To home. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers. Have you ever considered yourself? Do you ever think about it that one day I will come back home? I came to this world empty, and I will come where? How? Empty. Praise the Lord. One day they will say, Ashes to what? Ashes to ashes, dust to you, dust. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus, when your time comes, you will not be found wanting the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, when we, when we see all these things, as I said, as I said we have been called sons of God. We have been called a uh, saint of God. We have been called servants of God. We have been called strangers in this world. We have been, now, we are soldiers of Christ. Now, when if we are truly a soldier, soldier always be to, in order for you to recognize a soldier, soldier will put on what? A dress. Amen? We put on a kind of garment that differentiates him from other people that are around. Praise the Lord. Amen? If a man comes into this place now and put on the same product we put on, we will recognize him as what? As a soldier. Amen? But if he goes out back and dress himself and he comes in, oh, all of us will, oh, this man is a, is a, is a mystery man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he has changed what? The garment. And what the duty of this soldier? Praise the Lord. What is the duty of soldier? Look at it from, uh, with me in, uh, 
Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Alléluia. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2. What is the duty of this soldier that we have been called? Alléluia. I from verse 3 and 4. Thou therefore endureth hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life, praise the Lord. As a soldier that has been dressed up, that has put on the garment of righteousness, garment of holiness, the beauty of the Lord. God is now telling us what we need to do as a soldier. He's saying that no man worried entangled himself. That means as a soldier of Christ, you should not again go after the things of this world. Remember, he called and says, away, away, praise the Lord. He said, put on your what? Your beautiful garment. And now he's telling you that we need to war against flesh, against sin, against self, against the world. No man worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be what? A soldier. Glory to God. God is calling on you, brother. God is calling on you, sister. Amen. That now that you have been enlisted, now that you have been called a soldier of Christ, now that you have put, you have, you have, they put on you the garment of righteousness, we must war against sin. We must stand against sin. We must resist the devil. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. You will resist the devil. You will resist the war in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We are reading from verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It says in Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 3. And ye as it quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sin. That's our former position. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in, in time past, ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air. And the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. That's our former way of life. That's the way we live our life. That's where we find ourselves. In verse 3. It says in verse 3. And among whom also we all had our conversation in the time past. That means the way we live our life in the time past. The way we talk in the time past. The way we dress in the time past. The people who are shit with in the time past. So in the time past, past in the loss of our flesh. Fullness, the desire of the flesh and of the mind. And where by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now that you are a Christian, now that I put on the garment of Holiness, government of righteousness, is telling you that now you should not be part of those things again. The Lord will grant us grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, we are looking at verse 17 through 19. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 17 to 19. <clears throat> this I say therefore and testify in the law that he ends forth 
walk not as other gentle walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, anyone that is committing sin. The Bible says such a person has been cut off from where? From the life of God. Anyone, no matter who the person is, no matter the money, no matter the, 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 the title, as long as the person is committing sin, that individual has been cut off from the life of God. Whatever life that is living right now is living as a dead person. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whatever life anyone is living without Christ inside of you, God says, the Bible says, the word of God says, you are a dead person. The life of God is taken away from you. We are, we are, we are going to look into that. Praise the Lord. Amen. And look at from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, I pray, beginning from now, that blindness, that scale in your eyes, the Lord will move it in Jesus' name, so that you can see the beauty of the Lord that God has filled it with in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. How do, we, how do we have this garment in us? How do we get the garment, the beauty of the Lord? How do we get the nature of Christ within us? Praise the Lord. Look at look, look uh, with me in Matthew chapter 18. In Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I read from verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. Hallelujah. The word, convert, the word con conversion means to change, to be transformed. Hallelujah. I said, verily I said unto you, except ye be converted and become like what? A little child. Ye shall not enter into where? Into the kingdom of God until you have your heart change. But there's conversion inside of you. What do you call conversion? Repentance from sin, from your old way of life. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts 3, 19. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be ye converted, that your sin may be blotted out. When the, uh, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, until a man repent from his sin, until a woman repent from his sin, he is carrying a load of sin with him, with her. Anywhere you go, the load of sin is on you. Because you are going about with the bondage of sin, with the yoke of sin. But when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you confess Christ as Lord and personal Savior, when you say, Jesus, come into my life, the Bible says something will happen. A time of repression, the, the hand of God will come upon your life and will take away the load of sin. It will happen in Jesus' name. As it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. In Psalm 51, Psalm 51, let's look at the life of this man. In Psalm 51, let's consider the life of David. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here was David, and he cried out unto the Lord. He cried out unto the Lord. I believe in God, but there's someone here this afternoon, so the person will cry out unto the Lord that God, I need this garment, I need this beauty of the Lord. I want to clothe me. I need something afresh in my life. It will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. I read from verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercy. David cried out. David reached out, he, he looked at himself, he considered his life, and he cried out unto the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at verse, verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Behold, Behold, I was shepherd in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. David considered himself, look at him, said, said that, wait a minute. Not that the sin, not that now that sin having dominion over me, even when I was in my mother's womb, I was a sinner. And now I'm crying out unto you, oh God, have mercy on me. I pray to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Behold, I was shepherd in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse 6, Behold, thou desire truth in the inward part. Probably your life that you have been living is not a life of righteousness, not a life of holiness, a life of deception. Like this man, David has been living in deception. David has been living a, a, a wayward life, but now he cried out. He said, God, this is what you want. This is your desire. Hallelujah. Behold, thou desire the truth in inward part, that right from within me, there's nothing again I can hide. You know everything within me. Hallelujah. Right there are things you are hiding. Right there are things in your life that is not shown unto man, but only to yourself. God is saying, Come, son, come, daughter, I will have mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. In the, in the hidden path, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What wisdom is he talking about? He's talking about the wisdom inside the word of God to open your eyes to see that you need the, you need the beauty of the Lord upon your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 7, what me with eyes of Hallelujah. You can see today, what me with the blood of Jesus Christ? Let me the blood of Jesus Christ. I come, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I reach out to you. I cannot hide again. I need repentance. I want to transform my heart. I want to change my heart. He will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch me with eyes of, and I shall be clean. He will wash you clean. Wash me, and I shall be white as the snow. Make me to hear the joy and the gladness that the bone which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hallelujah. There's some things you are missing. Hallelujah. There's some, the, the power of sin has devastated you. He has destroyed you. He has made you to be desolate. And God is saying, as long as I say, Lord, come into my heart. He's saying that he will restore unto you the joy of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Make me to hear the joy and the gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. In verse 9, Hide thy face from my sin and blot out all my transgression. Verse 10, Create in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Create in me. I can hear you. Say it louder. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. When that happens, then we can call you sons of God. When that happens, we can say now you are the light of God. When that happens, we can say now you are servant of God. When that happens, we can say you are a stranger in this world that you are going, you are going to make heaven. Praise the Lord. When that happens, we can say now you are a soldier of Christ because you are going to fight against sin. Hallelujah. It will happen your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 6, that we read the other time. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Go with me to verse 4 and 6. Romans chapter 6 from verse 4. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 6, from verse 4 to 6. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that the life that, like as Christ, was raised up from the dead 
by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life that is now that you have this garment. That's the way you should carry yourself. That's the way you should live your life. A new life is given unto you. Amen. A new garment is released upon your life. Hallelujah. In verse 5, for we are being planted together in the likeness of his death. The same way Christ died on the cross. And you see, a dead person, you can't see a dead person on the cross. Oh, you look beautiful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't see a dead person, a, a, a dead person fighting. You can't see a dead person, uh, a dead person uh, smoking or a dead person uh, drinking alcohol. Hallelujah. You can't see a dead person, you no, know, you see it's done arbitrarily. Praise the Lord. And that's what God is calling you and I to, that we should die to sin. That sin should have no more power over your life. That you, should, you as a soldier of Christ should resist sin in your life if we happen. As if we happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at that verse 4 again. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also she will walk in newness of life. You will walk in that light. Amen. You will walk, you walk in that light, light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In verse 5, for we have been planted together in the likeness. When Christ comes inside of you, amen, you will put his spirit inside of you. His spirit will guide you. His spirit will lead you. What to do, what not to do. Hallelujah. His spirit will direct your life. That's why it says, in the likeness of his son. Amen. You have been planted. The, 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 the spirit of God will put his spirit inside of you that you will you not more committing sin. Glory to God. We shall also, we shall be also in likeness of the resurrection. Amen. What is resurrection? Resurrection means that Christ died inside the grave. And when he came out of the grave, he was living a glorious life for God. Hallelujah. That means from this moment onward, the beauty of God will be seen in your life. Anywhere you go, people will recognize, oh, you are no more the same person. Hallelujah. In verse 6, knowing this, knowing this, that our old man, that is the old man that we said, all things that are has passed away, knowing this, that our old man is crucified within. Amen. Some times ago, a man went for water baptism and as they dip him inside the water, and when he was coming out of the water, a packet of cigarettes fell from the pocket. And they called and said, Sir, take your cigarette. Oh, he said, Oh, I'm sorry. That cigarette is for the old man. That I'm a new creation. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray for somebody that all things will pass away in your life. Amen. Amen. That God will give you a new garment, a new way of life. A new of approach, a, 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 a new place to go. Hallelujah. The song says, The place I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to do, I go there no more. Great change since I'm born again. There's a great change since I'm born again. When a new garment is given unto you, when a new nature is given unto you, all things will pass away. The way you talk. The way you go, things you do, everything what a totally change. Praise the Lord. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. In Second Peter chapter, Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Peter was calling our attention. And before we look into that, let me give you uh, the, the, the definition for sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Sin 
is Satan in nature. Amen. S stands for Satan. I stands for A. Amen. N stands for nature. Praise the Lord. Anyone committing sin, anyone living the life of sin, all that you are seeing, that, all that's inside of this world is satanic word, satanic word, nature. Amen? Amen. Whether you commit sin secretly or openly, all that you are exhibiting is satanic word, nature. Now, Peter is calling our attention that that satanic nature, that's why Christ died on the cross. To give you, to take away satanic nature, to give you a new nature, to give you a new Christ, to give you the nature of Christ. See what he's saying in Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. We are reading from verse three to four. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter one, verse from verse three to four. Blessed be God. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundance mercy has begotten us, amen, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, verse 4, to an inheritance, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And what? Unpainted. Hospital. With this second Peter, please follow me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. With this second Peter. Second, second, thank you, Pastor. Second Peter, chapter 1. We are looking at verse 3 and 4. According to divine power. Has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us, He has called you out of darkness and where into life to the glory and virtue. Remember where we started from in uh, Psalm 29. The Bible says, Give unto the Lord glory award and strength. Amen. Give unto the Lord. Beauty of holiness. So Peter is reminding you that the nature of God is that glory that's going to be invested in your life. Hallelujah. In verse 4, look at verse 4. Say, We are by are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partaker of what? Of divine nature. Hallelujah. That Satan, satanic nature, sinful nature, amen, hallelujah, is it taken away? When that nature of Satan is not taken away, you cannot have this divine nature, hallelujah. What is sin again? Sin is success in nothing, amen. S stands for success, amen, hallelujah. I stand for A and S stand for A. Nothing. Praise the Lord. Success. Sin is success in nothing. Each time you are committing sin, all you are seeing is that I have nothing in the kingdom of God. I have no hope for heaven. Each time you are doing evil, you have no hope of heaven. Because success is where? In nothing. Vanity upon vanity. I pray that will not be your portion. Amen. Look at it again. Look at it again. That's verse 4 of 2 Peter chapter 1. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great promise, exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of divine nature. When you ask Christ to come inside your life, it will give you divine nature. Hallelujah. This, this, the, the ability to conquer sin, ability to conquer self, ability, ability to conquer the traditions of men. Hallelujah. Ability to say no to sin. Praise the Lord. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world 
this whole is full of corruption. Until you have the nature of Christ, you can't conquer it. You can't overcome sin. Until Christ comes inside of you, until Christ rule inside of you, until Jesus comes and takes your place inside of me, you cannot have that divine nature. I pray, beginning from now, the presence of God will bring it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. In John, John, first, uh, John chapter 3, first John chapter 3, excuse me, first John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Then we read from verse 1 to 10. Behold, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God? Hallelujah. Only those that have the nature of Christ can be called sons of God. Only those that have the beauty of Christ can be called sons of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because you are a changed person, because you have been transformed, because you are living a new life, because you have the, the nature of Christ inside of you. People of the world, they can't recognize you again because something, something has taken place in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it knew him not. Verse 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Amen. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him, does what? Purified himself even as his pure. Praise the Lord. It is your duty from now that you have the garment of Christ. Now that you have a change of life, say, no to sin. I will not go to Diapalo again. I will not go to Apache again. Hallelujah. You, you must determine within you to say, begin from now. I will not do it again. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 4, and every man that has this hope in himself, purifies himself even as his pure. Whosoever committed sin, transgress the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Praise the Lord. There's no sin in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's why it's giving us that nature. That's why it's giving us that beauty. Receive your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoso, whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not known, has not seen him, neither knoweth him. Verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteous is what? Is righteous. Hallelujah. Even as is righteous. Verse 8. He that over he that committed sin is of the devil. Hallelujah. Just as we said earlier, that's uh, satanic in what? In nature. Sin in nature. Hallelujah. Sin in nature. Satan in nature. Hallelujah. Whosoever. Anybody. Whether king, whether queen, amen. Whether marry, whether marry, this is committing sin. It's of who? It's of the amen. devil. I pray Satan will not get you. Amen. And this time will not get you. Amen. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, but his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever does not does not righteous amen is of who of 
to the devil. Hallelujah. Neither he, neither he that loveth his brother and prayeth from this moment that nature of Christ will be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. And pray that from this moment, God will grant unto you that nature of God, of Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That beginning from now, you will manifest that nature of Christ. The Bible says that as when we call upon him, he will give us the ability to repent from sin, to turn from sin and say, Christ, come into my life and we will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we listen to it? I want, us to, I want us to pray. Probably you are here this afternoon and you are, you are still under the control of the power of sin. You are still, you are still under the influence of sin. The choice you make, the things you practice is by the dictate of sin. I want us to pray and talk to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I need that nation. Lord Jesus, I need that nation Divine nature, I need divine nature. Break out of my life, satanic nature shall begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Break out of my life, satanic Amen. nature. Break out of my life, satanic nature. Lord, beginning from now, break out of my life, satanic nature. Take away from me, satanic nature. Break out of my life, satanic nature. Invest in me, O God, the nature of Christ, divine nature. To conquer sin, to conquer self, to conquer flesh. Say, Lord, I want to conquer sin. I want to conquer flesh. I want to conquer Satan. Beginning from now, Lord, at least in my life, I believe to say no to sin. I believe to let to say no to flesh. Lord, I surrender myself. I give my heart to you. David cried unto the Lord, God had him, he will hear you. David will transform, David will receive mercy. If he can cry out unto him this afternoon, he will hear you. He will hear you, cry out unto him, as David did. Break the power of sin in my life. Power of lying. Power of, of deception. Power of alcohol. Power of loneliness. Break it out of my life. Transform my heart. Change my heart. <laughs> Let the light of God shine upon my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory. Amen. Give you the honor. Lord, we are asking from this moment, let the coming of Christ, the nature of Christ, be seeing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the power of sin be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let people see us and see a new man. See a new, a new man in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank the Holy Spirit. Bless the with your holy name. Amen. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.